turned into pounds and donated to charity. Time now for our next challenge, and to be quite honest with you, it's all up in the air. Tonight, our new bet, two more names could be added to the Flight Pioneer's Roll of Honour. Those names will be linked with some of the all-time greats, such as Wilbur and Orville Wright, Louis Blériot, Alcock and Brown, and, of course, Wilson, Keppel and Betty. <laughs> Those names are Bill Sherlock and David Kemp, because they could be the first men to fly a microlight whilst throwing balls at nets, yes? It's crazy, but it might just work. <laughs> Over this 200-metre course, we've erected five hurdles. At the base of three of the hurdles are these trawl-shaped nets. Now, whilst Bill is attempting to manoeuvre his microlite under and over the hurdles, David will bomb the nets with these balls and attempt to score ten hits. They'll be allowed five passes over the field. That's the challenge. Let's meet the men and their flying machine. Hi, Bill. Hello, Matthew. David, welcome to the show. Hello. Look at this sweet little machine. <laughs> How did these come into existence, Bill? Uh, they were evolved from hang gliders in the mid to late 70s, and uh, both in the States and over here in the UK. So does it go as a hang glider, as an aeroplane, or as a hairdryer? Oh, no, it's, uh, it's a, a small aeroplane, and it has um, Civil Aviation Authority rules of its own. Yes. Is it good for flying at low altitude? It can be flown at low altitude, but uh, we always say in most types of aviation where there's an engine involved that safety is height. So it's much, much better to fly high and you have much more margin for error or if there are any problems, you've got time to search out. Well, you're going to have to fly very low here because, I mean, they're only the, these uh, hurdles are only nearly five metres high and only 50 metres apart. That's not much room for manoeuvre at all, is it? No, um, we've had a lot of practice. But you've got a lovely day for it. I mean, is this good weather? It's very calm. Yes, it is. Uh, it's a lovely day, but uh, unfortunately, we've carried out all our practice in, in high winds, or at least a lot higher winds than these, and it means that the aircraft is going to go over the ground a lot uh, quicker than it would in wind. Uh, it makes the challenge very much harder. Now, this is the man with the bombs, mm, David. Right. Yeah. You've got all kinds of problems with this, haven't you? I know, I know. What's your main difficulties? Well, like Bill says, because there's no wind today, we're, we're going down the course a lot quicker than we've been practising. Um, so I've got to be a lot quicker to, to aim and, and fire at the targets. Well, those um, targets are tiny. I know, I know. And look at your missiles. That's right. <laughs> Doesn't give you much room for manoeuvre. No, no, well, How yeah. fast will you be going? I will be going past the nets at about 50 miles an hour. It's, uh, and I've got a short time to, to wait. Oh, right. Mm -hmm. So, if you've got the wind against you, yep, then right. you'll be going... A bit slower. Slower. Yeah. So that makes the conditions all the more difficult to do the challenge in, which will make it even more exciting. So I wish you the best of luck, gentlemen. And it's up to us to decide whether this flying machine will make its men magnificent. <laughs> Billy. Yes? Do you fly it yourself? No, I've never flown except when I came off my push bike once. I flew for quite a while. <laughs> Can they do that or not? I don't think so. I think that they don't sound very confident about their wind problems. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> you know, they've been practising with a lot of wind and apparently mm. their wind's gone off. That's right. And, uh, <laughs> so the wind was slowing them up, whereas now they're going to be a lot quicker because they haven't got the wind. That's right. <laughs> so I think that they sound a little bit non-confident, don't they? So right. I'm going to say no. I apologise for saying it, but... I think it must be quite difficult flying one of those things up and down, mustn't it? So where do they practice? So you get uh, on airfields, that's oh, where they? aeroplanes go. Not in here, then. No. <laughs> no. no. <laughs> <laughs> thank you very much, that's Billy. Fine. No, thank you. John. Uh, I think I've got to agree with Billy here. I, I can't see how they're going to do it, personally. Um, Why not? Well, Billy said wind. Um, <laughs> and so you're all going for the technical wind? approach. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Right. Um, you have to be at 50 miles an hour, accuracy in a little... Yeah, yeah. Sorry, yeah. no. You're going for a no, thank you very much. Jessica? Well, I'm not going to be technical at all. I mean, I, I recognise David, as he calls himself now. Of course, he's Yuri, and he used to work for Aeroflot, so of course... <laughs> <laughs> no, in thank a word. Thank you. Three no's, Bobby. Um, Get the boys out. Of well, this. I think they they sound quite military, the guys. Obviously, they've practised at it uh, yeah. a fair bit. And so I'm going to say yes. Military? Like, they sound military. Yeah, yeah, that'll do for me. OK, that's, yeah. that's a yes there. We've got three no's, one yes. Let's see what the audience think. Place your bets now, please. <laughs>
And don't forget to do this at home. That's right, swish a box brownie round the living room. You'll get a, you'll get a shot just like this one. Can they do it or not? Well... And 62% of our audience here say yes, they can, so it's back over to Rawton where the lads are clear for takeoff. And it's chocks away as David and Bill start their first run. A direct hit and one on the scoreboard. Under the hurdle and two. Number three and a 100% record on the first run. Lovely earmuffs. <laughs> Coming round for the second run. It's in. Giving the grass a quick trim while scoring another hit. And that's another perfect pass. Six scored. Under the hurdle, and that'll count. And that. But not that. First one missed. Only two more to get as they back round for the fourth run. That's one of them. One more needed. And there it is. Number ten. And there's one for luck. See, now we thought the first challenge was pretty impossible and everybody thought that was completely impossible. But great, uh, great flying skill there, you know. And you, this should have been playing the Dumbusters March oh, to no, you. That was good at Cracker. Yeah. Would you take charge of the medal? Yes, I will. Yeah. And you take charge of the much coveted Kelly, chins and all. Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> Bill Sherlock and David Kemp. Well done. Thank you, sir. Magnificent challenge and a tragic panel. Look at this. John! No, 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 no. It's going to be between you and Billy, I know that, because, Jessica, you still have 35. You were right to say yes, Bobby. So you have 62. You're in the lead with 62 points. Don't go mad now. Oh. Yes. And you have no points either, so that means there's still under 100 points on the board. Now, if you don't book your ideas up, there'll be no money for charity at the end. Now, think on and look sharp. <laughs> you see, 62% of our audience were right. So that's the final hurdle cleared for part one. Join us after the break for the man who could play Diablo's advocate. I'll see you then. Ta-ra. <laughs>